what's your take on the indie publishing versus traditional um, spectrum? Yeah, when I started uh, writing, uh, traditional publishing was the only game in town. You had to find yeah. a large corporation to publish you and uh, you just didn't have any other options. You know, at a certain point, people started talking about self-publishing, but mostly those were people who simply couldn't find a traditional publisher. And, uh, you know, uh, people who were successful at self-publishing uh, were typically in those days uh, not very successful. It was very rare for someone to be successful as a self-published author. But Amazon changed the game about, you know, 10, 10 11 years ago now, 12 yeah. years ago, maybe, uh, when they made it free to just post your books online uh, uh, for sale on the Kindle store. And, you know, Barnes and Noble followed, Apple uh, followed, Kobo. Um, uh, there, yeah. there, there's a lot of retailers now that will take your books. It costs nothing to post your book there and see how it does. In the early days, those of us who were traditionally published were a little skeptical, but uh, we soon started hearing from our friends, you know, traditionally published people who basically, you know, they got rights back to some old book, they posted it on Amazon, and suddenly they were earning, you know, a few thousand dollars a month. That's awesome. And and so you only have to he hear that from one or two people to, <laughs> to realize, hey, I've got some some stories that are out of print. Why don't I try it myself? Yeah, And so, um, uh, you know, many people have tried it and some people are not successful at it. They just, for whatever reason, they, they can't make indie publishing fly. Yeah. But some people just, just take to it and it's like, wow, this is what I was born to do. Yeah. And what I have found is that for me, that the indie way has proved a lot more lucrative than the traditional sure. uh, yeah. publishing way. And I think that part of the issue was that um, my traditional publishers had a hard time getting me mm -hmm. and, and figuring out how to reach my target audience. And, uh, and, and now that I am you know, my own publisher, um, yeah. uh, I, I, I get me for yeah. starters, but um, if my publisher gives me a bad cover, that's my fault. I'm to blame for that. It's, I can't blame them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I've just found that for me, the indie way works better. And yet I have, I have some friends who have done much better with traditional publishing and just can't seem to make it work uh, the indie way. I'm just grateful that there's, there's two paths to Nirvana now. And so you're, yeah. you're twice as likely to, uh, uh, to do well, but uh, I, I could give you numbers, but I won't on yeah. uh, uh, you know, how I have done traditionally versus, uh, versus indie. I'll just say that for me, the indie way has worked out uh, uh, a, lot more, uh, a lot more money in, in my pocket. That's good, yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm very happy to go that way. But I tell people, look, you have two choices. Which, which way resonates more with you? Yeah. Uh, that might very likely be the, the right way for you. Don't, don't follow me just because of you see me uh, being successful. Yeah. Uh, and you want to emulate me. If, go the, go the way that you think will be will work best for you. And mm -hmm. if you choose to go traditional, there are smart things you can do to improve your chances. If you choose to go indie, there are a different set of smart things uh, to do that will improve your chances. Okay. But That's don't great. be an indie author and try to try to act like a traditionally published author, or vice versa. Yeah. That's good. That's really good. That's awesome. Well, I'm glad that indie publishing has worked out so well for you and everything. That's wonderful. I'm twice as glad as you are. <laughs> That's <laughs> uh, good. <laughs> because I, I didn't feel, you know, with few exceptions, I didn't feel like my traditional publishers were, um, were helping me that much. Yep. Um, yeah. Oh, that's now, so tough. Yeah. Now, now, I, I will say that the, uh, this book, uh, Writing Fiction for Dummies, as traditionally yep. published with, with the John Wiley, they, they do the dummies books. And of course yep. they own the rights to the dummies, uh, they have dummies trademarks. Oh. So I could not write a dummies book as an, as an indie author. Yeah. They've all sold like a hundred thousand copies. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That's done very, very well. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's made them a lot of money. Yep. Emphasis on the word them. Yeah. Emphasis and, on uh, them. That's uh, yeah. Yeah. Point, right? I, I, I've made I've made some money on it, but my Snowflake book, yeah, uh, 
uh, how to write a novel using the snowflake method has earned me vastly more money. That's amazing. Have you learned coming from the traditional pub world and now coming over the indie publishing world? Um, what are the biggest things that you've learned that you've maybe taken from what you learned in the traditional world and are now doing in the indie world? Um, I know you have to do things differently. I, I guess the, 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 the big lesson is the, the buck stops here. You know, if my book doesn't sell, it's my fault. Yeah. If the cover's lousy, it's my fault. If the editor did a lousy job, it's my fault. I hired a bad editor. Right? Yeah. Uh, if anything goes wrong, I'm to blame. I will take the blame. And there are some people who can't handle that. They, they would prefer to, to, to pass the buck on to someone else. Yeah. Uh, if you are an entrepreneur, you're happy with that. You, you want the buck to stop with you. You want the blame to come to you because yeah. then you can fix it. Yeah. If the blame is on someone else, if it's on your editor or the, the graphic designer that your publishing house hired, mm -hmm. there's a lot of times nothing that you can do about it. If they write back cover copy and uh, it's bad copy, mm -hmm. you may possibly be able to to catch that if if you're good at it. And I have done that with my traditional publishers a few times. They will send yep. me copy and say, it's going to press tomorrow, but let us know that you like this. And I'd say, <laughs> no. And I'd stay up till midnight and, and send them better copy. Yeah. Okay. But uh, they did not give me that right to veto their graphics, oh. their, 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 their yeah. uh, covers. And in some cases, um, uh, that turned out badly. No. Not as good as you'd like. Yeah. Uh, so if you're comfortable mm -hmm. with taking full responsibility for both the success and the failure of your your products, your books, then the indie way is is going to be good for you. Um, yeah. If you would, if you're not comfortable taking the blame and taking credit, you know, um, then you know maybe the traditional way is is the way for you because. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, that way you'll always have someone else that you Doing can that um, part of it. Yeah. You, you can push off the responsibility for making it succeed and you can sure. push off the, the blame for making uh, yeah, uh, when it fails, if it yeah. fails. Uh, and most books don't do very well. So most of the time, you know, you're going to be complaining about someone else. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some people just don't like to take responsibility mm -hmm. uh, for for, for what they do. And some people do like to take responsibility. So yeah. everyone has a choice to make. And sure. I confess, I would rather just let someone else worry about the details. Mm -hmm. But the discipline of, of uh, you know, understanding that, no, the buck always stops with me. If, if there's something wrong, it's my fault. But at least I have the freedom to go fix it now. Yeah, so yeah. That's that, great. Yeah, that that creates a, a discipline, right? Yeah. And again, you know, uh, the spirit needs to move me today to fix this terrible problem with my sales numbers. <laughs> All right, spirit, uh, go ahead. Get out, right? <laughs> Any time you want. I um, saw on your advanced fiction writing, you were talking a little bit about some marketing and email, and um, if you could give two marketing tips that are overlooked. Um, that writers should be doing more of, like, um, what would you recommend? Well, only two, because I, or, or when, when, I when I teach about marketing, I teach about the three rings of power. Okay, you can, as many as you want. <laughs> okay, the, the three rings of power uh, are, first of all, a website, and yeah. it doesn't have to be a really glitzy, fancy website. It just needs to be ground central for your, your marketing efforts. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, secondly, the second ring of power is your email list. Okay. And the third ring of power is uh, paid advertising. So okay. Facebook ads, uh, Amazon ads, BookBub ads, that, that sort of thing. Sure. Those three rings of power will take you a long way mm -hmm. in, in your marketing. And I, I, if you actually search for three rings of power, marketing, advanced fiction writing, you'll find you know, several pages on that where I talk about those. those I'll, uh, I'll rings that <laughs> uh, and, and there's one ring to rule them all naturally. Uh, yes. 
And that is uh, what uh, people in the advertising world call copywriting. Now, copywriting okay. has nothing to do with your your rights to publish. It's copywriting, C-O-P-Y, and then W-R-I-T-I-N-G. It's writing ad copy, writing persuasive ad yes. copy. And if you can just master that in everything you do, on your website, in your email newsletter, in your paid ads, uh, it will make each of those three rings of power vastly more effective uh, than if you don't. So that's why I call it the one one ring that rules them all, because uh, good good copywriting, being able to write good headlines, good ad copy, yeah. persuasive, uh, you know, marketing materials on your website, in your email list, uh, and in your paid ads, it will just pay huge dividends. And you can learn that from, you know, there's many books on copywriting on Amazon you can buy. Too yeah. many for me to recommend. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's, you know, a, there are a dime a dozen. Yeah. Uh, read the one that you find most persuasive in its ad copy. Okay. <laughs> okay. And Perfect. then, um, uh, uh, you know, use that to, to guide yourself. But the, the, the three rings of power guided by the, the one ring to rule them all, that'll take you a long, long way. Okay. Now, of course, there's many details, but those are the, the three uh, core, core things. That's awesome. That's great. I, I like that <laughs> with the analogy of the one ring to rule them all. It's, it's yeah. perfect. <laughs> you can tell I'm a Tolkien fan there. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. I went to England um, quite a few years ago, and we were actually in the area where Tolkien's grave was. And I went to see it, and ha over his grave, there's like this rose bush, and it has like all these little rings on it. I'm not sure if you've been there or not, but I, oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I gave you out. <laughs> oh, that's yeah, I, I read the Lord of the Rings to my uh, three daughters. It must have been like three or four times. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're just so good. And it's such good storytelling. What is the most difficult thing about being a writer and author for you? All the things that I told you today to do, I don't do those every day. I mean, the, I, I, I have to keep reminding myself to, to do this. I have to keep reminding myself, yep. sit down in the chair today and the spirit will move me. You know, when things go wrong with my marketing, the buck stops with me. I have to keep telling myself that yes. because none of those things are natural to me. Mm -hmm. And I expect none of the, most of those things are not natural to most writers. So yeah. when, I'm, when I'm preaching to you and the people <laughs> who, who listen to your podcast, yep. I'm preaching to me too. These, yep. the, the things I'm telling you are the things that I've found that were hard. Okay. I'm not telling you things that were obvious or for, were easy for me to learn or easy for me to do. They're the hard things. Yes. Yes. That's a good way to put it. I, and I love that when you're saying I'm speaking to you, I'm also preaching to me. <laughs> it's, it's a good way to put it. <laughs> I, I eat my own dog food, right? I, I listen to the things that I teach other people and I, yeah. I do that myself. There you go. That's, that's a good thing. What made you decide that you wanted to become an indie author? What was the inkling of the first moment? I, I guess I just got tired of uh, the way things were going with uh, traditional publishing. So I, I mentioned, you know, the, the, the Jesus novel that I had yeah. signed a contract with, right? And that contract was um, ultimately terminated by the, the publisher. <clears throat> that was the second of two books within about a three-month period that crashed and burned. Contract mm -hmm. signed, royalty or uh, uh, advances delivered to me that then needed to be paid back. Oh, okay. Yeah. And at a certain point, I just started feeling not too loved by the traditional publishing industry. It's not that people disliked me. Yeah. It's just that the industry, the machine, the system, whatever you want to call it, this faceless beast does not care about people. Yeah. And let's be honest, Amazon doesn't care about uh, indie authors either. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but but uh, I have much more control. Amazon is much more democratic. Basically, they just accept everyone who publishes and, um, and they don't, um, you know, they, they don't have this 
uh, faceless group of you know committees and people making decisions that that uh, can active that simply harm authors without without caring about it. And, you know, I'm I'm yeah. not alone in my experiences with traditional publishers. Most authors, mm -hmm. over the course of their career, if they publish for very long at all, will have a, a contract canceled, uh, canceled, and have to pay back the advance, or they will have um, a terrible editor who makes a miserable hash of their work. Mm -hmm. uh, this never happened to me, but it happened to many friends of mine Yeah, uh, where they had to um, uh, basically undo the terrible work that editing was done for them or uh, uh, cover designs that were uh, poorly executed or poorly conceived yes. uh, or um, in the case of several of my friends, a publishing company was sold to another to a larger company who then basically fired all the staff uh, and, uh, uh, and had no marketing people so that books that were already in the pipeline, they did come out, but they sold a few hundred copies in an environment where a few thousand copies is considered a tragedy, right? Oh, yeah. and, and so those authors in one case, uh, a, a particular author, had their career almost trashed by it. In two other, another case, you know, badly damaged, and a third case uh, came out pretty well okay. Okay. But but those were not good situations for those authors. They were harmed by the decisions of of big corporations that were making decisions good for the corporation, but not at all good for the author. You know, having two books canceled in just a few months, I just felt like. Um, I need to back away from this for a while and and uh, find find another another way to live. Yeah. <laughs> and, and of course, I don't make I don't earn my living from uh, my writing. Very few authors do. Very few authors do. No. Uh, I make my living other ways, and I write and I earn some money from yeah. that. Uh, uh, but so I didn't I didn't have to continue writing and so why would I in a, an environment that I felt was uh, you know harsh and cruel yeah. and uh, faceless and yeah I totally get that yeah, yeah. I and, completely get that and I, I you know I'm not bitter about this situation it's it's just that that's the reality and and yeah when you have a when you're in a harsh environment um, you know, you can be emotional about it and say, ah, the universe hates me. Or you can just say, no, um, this, this is not a good environment. You know, no, no. if it's hailing outside, come inside, <laughs> get, get out of the hail, you know, don't yeah. be hit by that. Uh, don't stand there, you know, cursing the hail. Yeah. Just get out of that bad environment. So I got out of an environment I didn't like. And, and when the indie way came along, I, indie yeah, I got into that uh, new environment. But, yeah. That's great. So what advice would you give to people out there who want to indie publish their books? Uh, what advice would you give them? Follow your dream. Follow your dream. Very short, very simple. Follow your dream. You know what it is that you want to write. You know what it is that that um, uh, in, in your fantasy world where you live, where uh, people love this kind of book, write that kind of book. No. Follow your dream. That's wonderful. Cool. Well, where can people find you and your books and, and everything? Okay. Um, so I have a website for authors uh, at advancedfictionwriting.com. So there's no spaces there, just advancedfictionwriting.com. Uh, it has all about my, my snowflake books and my writing fiction for dummies book and all that. Um, and I have a, a, an email newsletter and I have a blog there. If you want to know about the fiction that I write, well, that's entirely different, right? Yeah. Uh, so I have that at uh, my personal website at ingermanson.com. Okay, perfect. Uh, so there you can read about my City of God series, my Crown of Thorns series, and, and anything else. If you're interested in, you know, having an adventure in first century Jerusalem, then I'm your guy and ingermanson.com is your place. That's that's awesome. I'm, I'm excited to check out those books. Like I, I haven't read the Jesus one yet, so I'll have to jump into that. That 
sounds like a really cool series right up my alley. So well, I hope you uh, enjoy it. Yeah. yeah, thank you. And well, thank you so much for answering my questions, Randy, and mm -hmm. taking some time out of your day to chat with me. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks for having me, Devin. It's been, yeah. a, it's been a lot of fun. Oh, good. I'm glad you had fun. And I'll talk to you later. Okay, we'll see you. Sounds good. Bye. Bye.